Isn't Tmux just awesome? I mean, I love it. The fact that I'm doing this series is probably a good indicator just how I feel about it, but Tmux is something that can enhance your terminal workflow, and in this series, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about that. Now we're up to video number three, and we're going to take a look at Windows. Not Windows, the overrated operating system for Microsoft. No, 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 no. We're going to be taking a look at Windows in Tmux. And here's an example of what that looks like. I have Tmux open right here, as you can see, and I can move back and forth between the tabs that I have open. But how did I set this up? Well, that's exactly what we're going to learn in this video. So what I'll do is show you why this feature is so awesome. I'll show you how to create individual windows within Tmux. There's going to be a number of new things that I'll teach you in today's video, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm a little impatient, so let's just dive right in and continue learning Tmux. All right, so let's begin. Here I have Tmux open already, and the footer looks a little different, doesn't it? Well, it looks different because I have three windows open. On the bottom, you can see first window, second window, and third window. I just wanted you to see what the feature looks like. So here in the first window, I'm going to run HTOP. That's one of my favorite applications, which is why I pick on it so much. But since I have Tmux running right here in its own window, it's taking up the entire screen. And here's the thing, we've been working with Windows the entire time. If you create a Tmux session, you have at least one window. Now what I'll do is switch to a different window, and I'll let you know how to do that shortly, but here we have a blank window with nothing going on, and this probably looks more akin to what you're used to so far in the series. Again, every time you're running Tmux, you are using at least one window. So we have been working with Windows the entire time, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to reset this example, and we're going to see the entire process of creating windows within Tmux right now. And now we're back to an empty terminal. So I'll run Tmux. We have a brand new session open. Let's go ahead and take a look at the process of creating a window in Tmux. The first thing we're going to do is run the Tmux command with a special option. Even though we are inside of Tmux right now, we can still run Tmux commands inside of Tmux, there's a few that we can't run within Tmux. We're not going to get into that. But what we are going to do is run Tmux and then new hyphen window, just like that. And immediately, if you look towards the bottom, you'll see that we have a second window. We have window number zero, bash, and window number one, which is also called bash. We'll be renaming those shortly. But the thing to keep in mind right now is that when you create a window, it gets the next available number. Windows start at zero, just like everything else in Tmux. Basically everything starts at zero if Tmux has to count anything. So we have two windows open right here. And like you just saw, I was able to type Tmux new hyphen window to create a new window. But there's an even easier way to create windows in Tmux. What you could do is send the prefix key and then press C. That created another window. And that's how I remember it, C for create window. Now we have four. But how do we switch between these windows? Well, here's what we could do. We could send the prefix, and then we could press P for previous. Notice how the asterisk down at the bottom moved from the right to the left. Whichever window has the asterisk is going to be the one that you're using. So now I am using the second window. Second is basically the third in this case, but you get the point. If I send the prefix again, and again type P for previous, it moves me one more spot to the left. If I want to move the opposite direction, I can send the prefix key and then N for next. So N is next and P is previous. With that in mind, you now know how to cycle open windows. Again, send the prefix N for next, send the prefix P for previous, you get the idea. And each of these windows are completely independent. I just ran the LS command. I go to the previous window here. We no longer see the output of the LS command. We see whatever output we had inside this window. Now I'm back to the first one, so inside that one, I'm going to run HTOP. I'll send the prefix key, I'll press N for next. So maybe in this window, I'll be running package manager related things. So I'll just run the sudo apt update command. I'll switch over here. I'm doing some file management related shenanigans. And you get the idea. Sorry to interrupt myself, 
But I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. But how do you get rid of a window? What if I want one of these to go away? So what I'll do is send the prefix and then end for next. Notice how it moved from the far right back to the left. So now you know if you go to the end of the list and then go next, you just go back to the beginning again. Now I could close HTOP right now by pressing F10 on my keyboard, just like it says, but what I'm gonna do instead is just kill this entire window all at once. This will kill anything running inside the window. So what we're gonna do is send the prefix and then we'll type an ampersand. And now it's saying that I can kill the window. It called the window HTOP. It's often the case that Tmux will name the window after the command that you're running, but that doesn't matter so much right now. I'm just going to kill this window by typing Y to confirm that I do want this window to be closed. And now it's gone. Next, I could close another one by moving to whichever one I wanna close. I'll just go to the previous one here. I'm on window number two. And again, I'll send the prefix followed by the ampersand. So I could kill that particular window and now I'm down to just two windows. Now what I'll do is go back to the first one and I'll launch HTOP again. And now that's open. And I've moved to window number three. But wait a minute, why is this window labeled with number three and my HTOP window is labeled with number one? The thing is, as you might've guessed, the number that's associated with the window is assigned when it's created. I deleted two of them, so I'm down to the two that I have remaining right here. And the ID numbers did not change as I went through the process of killing those other windows. Just something to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm on window number three right now. In the first window, I have HTOP running like you see here. Now it automatically named this window here to HTOP, which is fine. I mean, I am running HTOP on this window right now, so it's not lying to me. But what I can do is name the windows anything I want. So maybe HTOP isn't what I want this window to be called. So what can I do? Well, to rename a window, just make sure you're on the window that you want to rename, send the prefix key, and then type a comma. Once you do that, it gives you an option to rename the window. We see that down there at the bottom. It starts off with its current name, so I'll just back that out. And I'll just name this monitoring. I think that's a good name for it. So maybe I want to have additional things running here for monitoring my system, not just HTOP. So maybe I prefer that this window is not called HTOP if I'm running more than just that. And like we learned in the previous video, we can create splits as well. So I'll create a vertical split. I'll send the prefix and then I'll type a percent symbol just like we've done before. And notice how HTOP has been resized. So that section has been resized in order to make room for a new pane that I created by splitting the window. And now I have this window right here with a split and what I'm going to do is move to the next one. So I'll send the prefix followed by N for next and notice how I only have one pane. I don't have a split like I did with the previous one. So here we have a split and here we don't. And the reason why is because each of these windows are completely independent. So right here, I'll create a horizontal split this time so I'll send the prefix key and then I'll type a double quote. And now, as you see here, I have a horizontal split. And as you can see, I could customize each window exactly as I want to. Here I can have a system monitor running. And then on the right, I have an open terminal I could use to execute commands. And then maybe I'll start some additional activities on this window, but you get the point. Each window is independent. We can create a window by sending the prefix along with C for create. We can switch between them by sending the prefix and then typing P for previous or N for next to switch between the windows that we have open. Now, another way that you can rename windows is by typing Tmux and then after that, rename hyphen window. After that, we give it the new name, whatever you want it to be, and we'll press enter. Notice at the bottom, the window has been renamed to new name. And that's all well and good, but personally, I prefer to send the leader followed by a comma because that's a quicker way to rename windows. 
So I'll send the prefix and then comma, and I have an option to rename the window. I'll just name it second in this case, and now it's renamed. So if you wanted to come up with a custom naming scheme, now you can do that. And just like always, if we detach from Tmux and then reattach, we get our session back. How cool is that? And there you go. We've worked through episode number three in the series. We're just flying right through the series, but don't go too fast. I want you guys to learn Tmux, and you can't really learn it by rushing through or cramming. I don't believe in cramming anyway. Cram sessions are a myth. We want to take our time, take regular breaks, and make sure that we're learning everything the way that we're supposed to learn it. Now, in the next video, I have even more Tmux goodness ready and waiting for you. The video is uploaded right now. So don't be in a hurry, just take your time. Make sure that you've learned and mastered everything that I've taught you so far. And then in the next episode, we'll continue learning Tmux. When you're ready, I'll see you there.